I'll turn it over to AJ. Yeah, we're super excited to be here today to announce the signing of Fernando Tatis to a 14-year contract. It's a big day for the franchise. It's a big day for the game of baseball. Uh, one of the game's most exciting and best talents deciding to make San Diego his home, uh, hopefully for his career. You know, the contract process really started uh, January 3rd. Uh, I flew down to the Dominican Republic. Um, you know, I got in the car with uh, Cesar Rizic and Chris Kemp, who oversee our international department. And on the drive from Santo Domingo, just outside of San Pedro, where Fernando makes his off-season home, uh, we just talked about three different paths. And we talked about we could go year to year. Uh, we talked about potentially a multi-year deal in which we were to buy out a year or two of free agency. And we talked about a long-term contract in which uh, Fernando hopefully would be a Padre for his career and we would have him under contract throughout his 20s and his 30s. And in talking, you know, we talked about the positives and the negatives of those situations in that car ride. Uh, and Chris talked about the day before he was in uh, at the park in the park, which is the area outside of Petco um, in center field. And he's walking around looking at the statues of Trevor Hoffman and Tony Gwynn. And just thinking about their legacy, what they meant to the city of San Diego, what they meant to the Padre fan base, what they meant to the game of baseball. And we just talked about that third option uh, when you have a, a talent as exciting as Fernando. Uh, Chris started talking about a statue contract and uh, talking about um, you know, what that meant to the city and, and the franchise and that Fernando may have a chance to, uh, you know, with the type of contract, may have a chance to one day be out there like Tony and like Trevor um, you know, and, and, and build his own legacy. That, that day in San Pedro, we talked about a lot of high-level things. We talked about the organization, we talked about the farm system, we talked about our scouting philosophy, we talked about ownership. Uh, we talked a lot about what was important to, to Junior in this whole process. We talked a lot about leadership. We talked about his vision for the organization uh, and, and how we can be better as a, as, a, as a group and as a franchise. And these things really only work when, when everybody's on the same page. And I think we left that meeting feeling like we were, we were really, there was a lot of common ground amongst everybody. Uh, a week later, I think that was confirmed when uh, Danny Lozano, Roger Tomas from the MVP group gave us a call. And you know they, they had talked to Fernando about the different possibilities and what, what he was interested in. And it was very clear he was interested in option three, uh, long-term commitment from the Padres. He wanted to be uh, one of those very unique players that uh, plays his career in one spot. Um, you know He loves the franchise, he loves the city, he loves his teammates. And he talked a lot about uh, you know, really wanting to get on that path of that statue contract. So at the same time, I was having conversations with Peter Seidler and our motives were very much in line. Uh, we made what we felt like was a super aggressive 12 year concept. Uh, Danny uh, didn't think it was quite as aggressive as we did early. <laughs> um, and in typical Toddy fashion, uh, his, his only real comment was, why not my whole career? And as we got to thinking about things, uh, we, we obviously shared in that same uh, thought process. Um, and we're here today. I think one, it speaks to the strength of the organization and, and what's been built over the last five years. And I think it definitely speaks to Fernando's vision and his spirit and what he wants to do with his career. The, the building process really started five years ago with the, uh, with the trade of James Shields to the White Sox for Fernando. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the scouts that had an opportunity to see Fernando as, as a player before he played his first professional game, uh, Nick Annis, Pete DeYoung, Fred Yolman, Spencer Graham, uh, they came back with very consistent messages. This was a five-tool talent uh, who showed aptitude and instinct on the field. Um, and probably the thing that stood out to me the most was everybody talked about his energy and passion and love for the game that, that shone through even on a backfield here in Arizona. And I think they felt very, uh, very strong that because of that passion and energy, uh, he had the chance to take those tools and turn them into super, super sharp skills. Uh, and obviously they're very accurate in their assessment uh, um, from their scouting reports. On a personal level, my relationship started with Fernando. He was a 14-year-old tryout player. You may not remember this in Juan Dolio on a field. Uh, he had a good projectable frame. He was very smart. He had a good head on his shoulders. You could tell that. Uh, he also ran about a 7.360 that day. He probably doesn't <laughs> want to admit that. Uh, <laughs> and I think it's, uh, you know, it's really fun to be up here from a 14-year-old you know, tryout player to now making a 14-year commitment. Uh, that's, a, that's a bond that we share. And I, I think two things really under the radar. There's not a lot that's underrated about Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, everybody sees the flair and excitement that he plays the game with and, and the ability he has. Uh, but the, the number one thing to me is he has a burning desire to be the best. He's a vicious competitor. 
Um, and he, he wants to be the best in the game. I think the second thing is he has a tremendous respect for the game of baseball. I think a lot of it was made last year, you know, young players changing the game, the game of baseball, what, what, what results in success. It doesn't really change from era to era. Some of the styles change. Maybe some of the skills may change at times. But he really respects, you know, he respects greatness. He respects the people that have come before him. I think a lot of that credit goes to his family. Um, <clears throat> I think the... Uh, the people that know Junior well, they know how tight he is with his family, his mom, Maria, his dad, Fernando Sr. They've done a great job raising him. His family's super important to him. Um, and I think a lot of the credit, too, to our player development staff. Like, when you get a talent like Fernando, at times it's very easy just to say, hands off. You know, don't, don't, don't touch that guy. Just let him be. I think our player development staff did a great job of balancing, letting him be himself, uh, while also continuing to mold him from an all-star type capable player to, to a perennial MVP candidate. I could really name the whole staff, but uh, you know, I just want to want to want to talk about Doug Banks, Anthony Contreras, Philip Wellman, Jay Young, uh, that had him in the minor leagues, and then major league coaches like Andy Green, uh, Damian Easley, Bobby Dickerson, and Jace Tingler. I honestly could go on and on, but uh, that group uh, helped take that great foundation that his parents and his family laid and uh, continued to help mold him. And I think that made it easy for us as an organization when we talk about making a 14-year commitment. We did really three unique things here over the last few years. One is trading an, an all-star caliber player. His dad loves the story for a guy that uh, had not played a professional game at the time. Uh, I think the second thing was 2019, uh, spring training actually, when we made the decision to, uh, to make an aggressive promotion and put him on the major league roster uh, opening day and giving him an opening day assignment on the big league roster. I give a lot of that credit to, uh, to, to what my special assistants at the time, uh, Manny Machado, Eric Hosmer, and Ian Kinsler. As players, they came into my office with about a week left before spring training, and they said, uh, you're absolutely crazy if you don't put this guy on our major league team to start him and Chris Paddock, actually. Uh, so I had to listen to those guys at that time. And obviously, the historic 14-year contract today is a, is a unique moment. Um, you know, I think we're in an era and a generation in sports where, where players, um, they move from team to team. That's commonplace. Um, you know, in our, uh, you also see players at times that are in, that the, uh, you know, building their brand or making a name for themselves is as important as winning rings. Uh, in our city, we've seen some some great talents and some great players leave as they're entering their prime, or as they're getting to there, or even before they get to their prime. We've seen some teams leave our city, and I think uh, it's been hard for our fan base or the sports fans in San Diego to bite down on consistency, and I think that's what makes today such a special day for the fans of San Diego. Um, you know, for the sports fans in San Diego. So I think they really appreciate and understand the impact of Fernando's decision today, wanting to be here, wanting to be a part of this, wanting to, uh, wanting to be a part of the city and, and the organization for, 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 uh, for a long time. And I think a lot of the credit uh, goes to our ownership, goes to Peter Seidler. Uh, he makes it very clear. It's, it's easy working for him. It's very clear what the message is, and that's to, that's to win championships. That's to do something great. Uh, and do something that's sustainable and year in, year out, have an opportunity to play in October. Um, you know, I think Don Welke, who shaped a lot of our thoughts here in this organization for, for the few years he was here, he always talked about first you need, if you're going to have a championship organization, you need people of ability, uh, and then you need stability. And I think everything we've done on the baseball side and the business side here over the last five years, uh, that's, that's really, the, that philosophy is really at its core. And when you have a franchise player and a franchise talent, uh, and an owner that uh, both share a vision uh, to play on that big stage year in, year out, you have a chance to do something really special. So he has a lot of nicknames, El Nino, Bebo, <laughs> Nando, Tadi, Junior. Que nombre más que tú tienes ahora? Um, but uh, we're super excited to, uh, to announce Fernando Tatis's extension here today and his 14-year deal with the Padres. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. Fernando, would you like to say a few words? <clears throat> yeah. Um, wow. Um, I just feel grateful, grateful for, for everything that has happened. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Peter for putting their part. Thank AJ for trusting me, uh, for, to my family. You know, they, they, they built me, they built me up. What I, I always say, what I am today is because of my family, uh, how, they, how they just brought me out to to this life, uh, how they teach me everything, and you know they always be my number one supporters, and they always have been there for me. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody out there that has helped me in my career, every coach uh, that have put their part 
I'm, I'm on my side. They know who they are, and uh, I just want to say thank you. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm embracing this moment right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just, it just feels great. It just feels great. You know, when you, when you're just a, a kid dreaming on the field. When my dad was playing, uh, and uh, I see myself playing on the big leagues, um, being a winner, being one of the best of all the time. And uh, now it's, you know, it's, it's getting more complete. But we, I'm just, I'm just grateful for everything. And to the city of San Diego, uh, we're here to stay. And I'm, I'm, you know, I, I love this city. I love the fans. I love the culture. I love the vibe. And uh, I'm all about winning. And I'll, I'm all about winning in San Diego. So I feel like th that's going to be the big part over here. All right. Thank you very much, Fernando. We'll now begin the Q&A portion of our program. If you have a question, please utilize the group chat feature, state your name and affiliation, and I'll call on you accordingly. We'll begin with questions in English, followed by a few minutes in Spanish as well. In the interest of time, we just ask that you limit to two questions per person. And we'll start with Bob Scanlon, Fox Sports San Diego. Fernando, congratulations on this life-changing moment for you. Certainly well-deserved. And the pride that you must feel right now, what are you feeling, not only for yourself, but, but for your family as well? <laughs> It just it, it feels great uh, all the way around. You know, when I when I mentioned early, you know, I was just a kid dreaming about this and all about this moment. And you know, just seeing seeing the fact that it's tr becoming true, uh, it's it's just I'll probably say one of the best feelings of the, of the world. What does it mean to you to know that you're going to be representing not only this organization, but the city and this fan base for the next 14 years? And, and what was sort of that turning point where you decided that, yes, you did want to make this long term a commitment? Now, the city of San Diego embraced me since day one. You know, that when I was in the minor leagues, they want me up there. And I, I, I don't I will never forget that opening day, my first at bat, you know, how just the fans received me that moment. Uh, I, I just it just clicked that moment. You know, I felt the love. It was mu mutual right away and uh, I said, this is, this is home, this is home. Congratulations, Fernando, great, great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Andy Halbrin, SDUT. Hey, Fernando, congratulations. Did you ever think it would happen this early in your career that you would get this kind of a contract? <laughs> you know, for me, it's always about breaking those barriers. You know, when I, since, since a young age, because I'm still a kid, I wasn't gonna say a kid, but since <laughs> since a young age, uh, I was just always trying to break those barriers. You know, I always say age is a matter of time. It's 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 just it's just a number. I feel like my capacity and the work I put in, and uh, you know the trust they put in me, and uh, I feel like it's just it just feels all the way around, and uh, it, I feel like it was the right time. There will be kids that are five years old right now that will watch you their entire childhood through high school, see you with the same team. How important was that for your legacy to, have, to be able to have that and to provide that for kids? That's one of the biggest key factors over here. You know, just being able to be one of, one of those athletes that kids grow up to is just, you know, those are one of the main things that keep me pushing every single day and just give me more gas to my motor every single day. And uh, like, uh, I put, I put this on Twitter, but I'm, you know, let's do it for the next generation because they're going to keep this game alive. Appreciate it. Thank you, Fernando. Next up, AJ Casabell, MLB.com. Congrats, Fernando. Thank you. What, what did all the, the off-season moves, if anything, mean in your decision to sign in, in terms of just the team's commitment to, to chasing that World Series that you want so badly? You know, they, they, have, make, they have made it clear that the culture that we're trying to build over here it's a winning culture, and uh, you know we're going for it. Uh, everybody's feeling it, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's one of it was one of the big keys uh, keys uh, to it because you know one of the biggest key factors over here is winning, and I feel uh, everybody's on the same page. So that was one of the, the biggest moments over here. Fourteen years is a really really long time. At, at what point did you start to comp contemplate that like this could be where you spend? your entire professional career for the most part? You know, I was already thinking about that since I got to the big leagues. You know, my dreams, uh, you know, the, the players I admire the most, the most is they, they, stay, they stay in one team, uh, they, build a, they build a culture, and, they, you know, they become winners with the team that they just give them the chance. And, uh, 
you know, I'm over here trying to do the same. You know, I'm, I'm embracing everything, and uh, I am just can't wait. Kevin Acey, SDUT. Hey, this question's for AJ, and I just wonder, what are the, the biggest factors? Why is it so important to have this particular player as the cornerstone of the franchise through 2034? Yeah, I mean, I think there's 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 a lot of factors. I mean, but uh, you know, obviously, when you're talking about a five-tool shortstop, uh, you know, that uh, that plays up the middle of the field. He's a two-way player, offense and defense. He impacts the game every possible way. Um, you know, with his glove, his arm, uh, his legs, his mind, um, and, and to me, like really, the uh, I think the part that that, that convinced us is. You see the way he goes about it over the last few years. Uh, after his first year, he had a, a very good rookie year, and he wasn't satisfied. He wanted to, to have an even better sophomore season. And when we got beat last year in the playoffs, uh, he was the first one to come forward and say, all right, now let's go get better. And, you know, you see the passion, the love he has for the game of baseball combined with the talent. I think that's uh, that, that was the central part of our decision. And for Fernando, um, the decision to do the big league advance uh, contract your decision alone and and what went into that um it was just a um, family decision and um, i'm just going to call it that way thanks all right next up we'll go to marty caswell 1360. hi fernando um how big a factor was your relationship with with aj preller from the from the get-go and the fact that they did not manipulate your service time your rookie season um i i feel like since the minor leagues, you know, AJ had put a trust in me and, uh, you know, every challenge that he put, I just, I just embrace the moment and, and go through it and make it happen, right? <laughs> but, you know, the, the key factor over here, you know, is, has always been that trust and uh, the big part of it is I, I always show them that I'm always ready to challenge and uh, you, um, we, just, we just have built that trust and uh, hopefully we can keep growing a little, uh, even more and just create a bigger, even better relationship. And how much do you embrace the idea of not just being the face of San Diego Padres, of San Diego sports, and, and also of Major League Baseball with everything you've done endorsement-wise this offseason? Uh, it's a really big factor. You know, I'm humbling because of the fact, you know, how people want me out there. But it's, all of that is just more motivation because I know even more people are watching me. So. You know, I've just got to keep getting better and, and go go every single day out there and show them who I am. And uh, like I said, those are just things that just keep me pushing. Thank you. Bernie Wilson, AP. Hey, Fernando, congrats. Thank you. Uh, your statue, do you want it to be a, a view on defense or doing the bat flip? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna put those numbers first, and then we we can discuss about it. But I don't know. I feel maybe we can have three statues through different ways, but <laughs> okay. we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, and a follow up on Kevin's question. I know you might not want to go deep into the the big league advanced thing, but didn't you use that to build a field or something at your house to help you, you know, develop the ball player? Uh, it, it 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 was a help. It was a, uh, it was uh, really helpful. But like I mentioned earlier, it was a decision for, for from me and my family. All right, thank you. All right, next we we'll go to Jeff Sanders, SDUT. Hey Fernando, my question also comes about the BLA. Has this contract changed what you think about what you did for your career with that advance all those years ago? <laughs> no, uh, no. Definitely not, but um, like I mentioned earlier, it was a decision for me and my family. Great, thank you. Price Miller, SDUT. Fernando, congratulations. Um, so many people around the game of baseball have kind of explained why you're worth this contract of this size, but we haven't really heard why you think you might be worth the longest contract in baseball. What do you think? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a really good one. But what can I say? I'm, I'm just a kid that's going to play this game with the same love since I was playing in the backyard um, in the house. And uh, I'm just going to bring that same energy and same love probably until I'm 40. So it's not going to be 14. Probably it's going to be even more. <laughs> uh, one for AJ. Um, when you think back to that uh, James Shields trade, that wouldn't happen. I remember the MLB.com story of the players involved in the in the trade, Fernando was the last name mentioned. He certainly wasn't the headline of that trade at that moment. 
how much did you know what you had gotten away with so to speak in that trade and how much did he has he exceeded what you thought you got in that trade yeah, and the deal was was about Fernando. So I think you know when you, when you see those deals, Eric Johnson as, as the uh, the established uh, you know professional player, I think he may have gotten the uh, the ink and whatever story. But for for the baseball group, it was, it was clearly about Fernando. It was the reason why we made the deal. And again, you, you know when you make deals like that, you know to sit here and say, hey, you know we we acquired a, a, a guy that could potentially play in Cooperstown at one one day or win an MVP. I just know our, our, our scouting group and our front office felt like we had a, a, a player that, that potentially was going to be very impactful for us and was going to be a key part of what we were going to do here down the road. Uh, and obviously, uh, credit to Fernando and what he's done in his work. It's, it's played out that way for us. Thank you. All right, next, we'll go to Darnay Tripp, NBC. Hey, Fernando, congratulations. AJ just referenced your burning desire to be the best. Uh, Jace talked about a little bit earlier how their – convinced that you're not going to change and that's part of what makes this deal uh, part part of what makes them excited about this deal curious just from your perspective all that's come your way so early in your career including this contract how do you make sure you keep the same approach that's gotten you to this point <laughs> that's really simple you know I'm I'm just the same kid on the field um, nothing's going to change I'm playing the game I love and I feel when you do the things you know with passion and, and with love, you know, I feel like uh, it's going to reward you. And uh, I feel like people have seen it, how I play this game, and um, I'm, I'm just going to be the same kid every single time. And you very quickly kind of become the, the pulse and the heartbeat of this team, one of the leaders that was really evident, of course, um, in the postseason last year. Were you surprised at all at how quickly kind of that developed and how much more do you kind of take on that role now? <laughs> that comes with time. That comes with time, and uh, you know, uh, I still gotta show way more, and uh, I gotta win my spot. And um, you know, there's a really group, very, very good group of veterans over here. I'm still looking forward to them. Um, you know, my dad was essential to me to learning that area of showing respect to, you know, to to the game and to the, to your teammates, to the to the time and to the experience and um, I'm really big on that and um, that's, one of, that's one of my main things for me. Thank you. Okay, next up, Jason Stark, The Athletic. Fernando, congratulations. When you hear your name compared with LeBron or Patrick Mahomes, uh, that suggests that you're a player who can have an impact not just on your team but on your sport. I wonder what your reaction is when you hear that. <laughs> uh, I just smile. Uh, I just smile because I know the greatness of LeBron. Uh, I know the greatness of Mahomes and the, the big things they're winners. You know, there's a lot of things I'm, I still need to accomplish to be even close to those guys. But I feel like the main thing is going to be winning. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm looking forward to that challenge. And uh, I'm looking forward to be, you know, stay next to them. It's not about this year and, you know, how they're mentioning it's going to be how, how they show, especially LeBron. LeBron, is, they, they show it every year, and that's going to be the big thing for me, showing it every year. Thank you. All right, we can take a few more in English, then we'll switch over to Spanish. We'll go to Julian with Fox 5. Hey, Fernando, congratulations. Uh, Preller mentioned about the statues of Petco Park, and you kind of mentioned that, but you, know, you get the big contract, you make the playoffs again. I guess, what do you see in the next 14 years that you need to do to get that statue that uh, that we're talking about, <laughs> I feel if I bring the same energy and the same passion, passion every single day, that's gonna take care of itself. The same worth, uh, work ethic that I've bring the the past years, uh, I feel like that's have given me results. And uh, uh, like it's it's about you know being the same and even getting better. I feel like I'm gonna get better with time. I'm gonna still keep learning about myself, about the game. And, uh, and you know, from here, and just we're going to the skyrock. And this organization's not just investing in you, but they brought in a lot of talent in this off season. Where does this group kind of stack up? I know it's really early, but on teams that you've played and been a part of. <laughs> we have a lot of confidence on the guys that you know that came in. Uh, we have big dogs in the room, and but. Uh, and we, we are trusting it, you know. We know what we're capable of, uh, what we can bring to the field, but the big part over here is that everybody's working for it. Nobody's know, uh, they know how hard the challenge is gonna be. 
So everybody's just been perfect, and uh, trust me, it's going to be fun at the end of the road. All right, next we go to Jake, CBS 8. Hey, Fernando, congrats, man. Uh, you mentioned how much the city of San Diego means to you, and, and A.J. Preller brought up, uh, you know, how rough the, the, the past has been for the city of San Diego. What does it mean to you to, and with this contract and your play on the field, help change the culture of sports within Can you repeat that? You kind of cut out there at the end. Sorry, I, I was curious, Fernando. What does it mean to you to help change the culture of sports within the city of San Diego? Uh, it means a lot. It means a lot, especially if we're working to building a winning culture. That's that's the biggest key over here, and uh, everybody's looking forward to it. And you know, it means a lot for me to the city. Just you know, what we're building over here, the culture, and uh, it's just. You know, I love the city of San Diego, and it's gonna, it's gonna be a great it's gonna be a great time over here. And then, if I'm still coming through uh, clear, can you kind of take me through that decision when AJ Preller brought up? You know, you kind of had three options: uh, year to year, the middle option, the long term option. Between you and your family, what was the decision between the middle option, the long term option? Because theoretically, you, you probably passed up money by not taking that middle option. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's been the my it's been my mindset since since I started playing this game. I said I feel like the team that gave me the chance, uh, I will I will, I will embrace it 100%. And uh, you know why not? Just why not go to to a st statue um, contract? You know, people are saying oh too many years, but uh, I'm just I'm just love what what I'm seeing. You know what what we're gonna do, and uh, just. I want the I want the statue on, on one team. I want to be I want to be able to stay in one team and you know build my legacy over here in San Diego. All right, we'll do one last question in English. Go to Ron Blum with the AP. Hi Fernando, congratulations. Uh, looking back, would you recommend Big League Advance to other prospects who are similarly situated as you were back then? And <laughs> now going forward, how much do you have to give of your earnings to the company? <laughs> Uh, I feel like that's a very uh, private decision from the player standpoint and from their family and uh, you know that was that was a part for me and I'm gonna stay the same way it was the it was a decision for me and my family all right well, we're gonna switch Thank over you. to Spanish questions now both AJ and Fernando can take those for you we'll start with Jorge Camacho ¿Qué tal, Fernando? Felicidades por este contrato. Eh, recuerdo hace meses que salió el reporte de, de unas condiciones así y que tú publicaste que, bueno, estoy en un lugar donde no se oye tanto los rumores. ¿Desde ahí te daba la idea de, de que venía ese contrato? Uh, ¿sabe? Había mucha gente especulando que este y que aquello, pero, ¿sabes? No, no estaba prestando atención a tanto lo que decía la gente. Sí, la gente me mencionaba y yo le decía que tranquilo, que no, no había pasado nada todavía, pero, ¿sabes? Esas son cosas que la gente siempre van a traer su opinión, pero simplemente depende de uno si prestar atención. También, eh, te están comparando ahora con Troy Hoffman, Tony Wynn, que han sido jugadores de élite en la franquicia. ¿Qué te dice para ti, por supuesto, estar en esa lista exclusiva del equipo de los padres? <laughs> Un reto muy grande, un reto muy grande que adquirir y mucha responsabilidad que, que conlleva. Así que simplemente estamos mirando hacia el futuro, tratando y ¿no? a, a trabajar, a trabajar, que es lo más importante y que o sea, ellos dedicaron su vida a, a, a este equipo y su trabajo y su forma de ser, su familia. Y estamos, yo estoy mirando de la misma manera también. La última para mí, hasta los niños, las futuras generaciones, eh, se ponen trenzas, se ponen el 23, uh, de el del cuarto. ¿Qué te dice para ti ver estas generaciones que te están siguiendo? Es algo muy, algo muy bonito, algo muy hermoso, de verdad que sí. Eh, son, son cosas que siguen motivando a uno para seguir dando lo mejor de uno y ya que tanta gente, especialmente tantos niños están mirando, o sea, son cosas que llevan hasta comportarte mejor dentro y fuera del terreno, ya que hay una generación que, que admira y que va aprendiendo de uno, aunque sea de cosas buenas y cosas malas. Que, así que hay, que hay que cuidarse aún más y, segui, y seguir trabajando para ellos. 
Gracias, felicidades. Right, next, we have Daniel Schwartzman, Univision. Gracias. Hola, Fernando. Te has ganado ya la, la confianza, el respeto del mundo del, del béisbol. ¿Cuáles han sido tus claves del éxito a nivel individual? Uh, ¿Qué te digo? Yo pienso que eso viene de, de, del trabajo que uno va poniendo de, de liga menor y sabe la decisión, la determinación que uno tiene al final del día es lo que conlleva a uno. Y simplemente, sabes, hemos venido jugando el juego que uno ama, haciéndolo con amor y con pasión, y yo pienso que al final del día el juego te recompensa y te da todo esto. Y una más, Fernando, un mensaje a la afición latina, ¿no? Que tanto te ve, tanto te admira y sobre todo te apoya los latinos. <risa> no, que gracias, gracias, gracias por el apoyo y que de verdad que le vamos a seguir trayendo un buen show. Eh, hay una promesa de parte de mí, seguir trabajando y seguir dando lo mejor de mí cada, cada día que, que salga el terreno y que nos sigan apoyando, que todo apenas comienza. And next we go to Arlene Moreno. Buen día, Fernando. Muchas felicidades por este contrato. Eh, pues 14 temporadas, 14 años es mucho tiempo. ¿Cuál te gustaría que fuera tu principal legado, eh, el legado de Fernando Tatis Jr. con los padres? Que fuimos ganadores, que, que, que fuimos un equipo ganador eh, y que fuimos un equipo que, que le traímos vida a la ciudad. Yo pienso que eso van a ser los recuerdos, si logramos hacer eso, eso van a ser los recuerdos más bonitos que voy a poder llevar allá hacia mi jubilación. Y si me permites una más, eh, pues mencionaste ¿no? que ese, ese primer turno al bat que tuviste y la reacción de la gente te dio esa sensación de hogar. Este, para ti, ¿qué, ¿qué factor es lo que convierte a San Diego como el lugar ideal para convertirlo en tu hogar? Todo, todo, todo lo que conlleva la organización, lo que ella y, y, y el dueño ha, ha, han ido construyendo y demostrándolo, que una cultura ganadora, y simplemente, ¿sabes? la decisión se tornó fácil. Es una ciudad que amo, una fanaticada increíble. Eh, y simplemente, ¿sabes? Se, convirtió, se convirtió fácil al final del día poder decir que sí. Y de verdad que simplemente agradecido por todo. Muchas up, gracias. We'll go to Enrique Rojas, ESPN. Enrique, ¿estás there? Hola Bebo, felicidades por el contrato. Lo primero es cómo tú lograste mantener el enfoque jugando pelota invernal en República Dominicana al tiempo que discutía un contrato histórico. Y además, cómo AJ Preller te permitió eso en medio del, de las negociaciones. Yo no, yo no creo que ellos estaban tan de acuerdo, pero... <risa> ¿Qué te digo? Al final del día, ¿sabes? La pelota es lo que uno ama, la pelota invernal, amo jugar ya en República Dominicana, ¿sabes? Poder darle también ese show a, a la fanaticada de, de, la, ¿sabe? De, de la República. Pienso que ellos también se lo merecen. Y nada, simplemente estábamos, estábamos enfocados en seguir jugando, seguir mejorando, que por eso fue la parte por la cual decidí jugar. Había, pienso yo que había un par de cositas que había que seguir trabajando. Pero nah, el, enfo el enfoque se mantuvo. Uh, yo he aprendido en mi corta edad cómo aprender a separar cosas, especialmente cuando entro en un terreno de juego. Y al final del día se tornó fácil. Si ganamos un serie mundial, tiene la permisión para jugar ya. Es un compromiso <risa> grande. <risa> Otro acuerdo. <risa> Fernando. Cuando un equipo firma a un pelotero por un contrato que es el tercer mayor de la historia, básicamente está comprando una carrera del Salón de la Fama. ¿Tú lo ves así, el compromiso de ese tamaño? Claro que sí, claro que sí. Eh, eh, esa es la meta. Eh, aparte del Salón de la Fama, ser un ganador. Y a, a trabajar, a trabajar, a seguir enfocado. Aún falta mucho para eso, pero eso se logra con el día a día, trabajando día a día y, ¿sabes? Si, si tomamos carta en el asunto y seguimos trabajando, pienso que al final eso se va, se va a poner solo ahí. ¿Ganar y llegar al Salón de la Fama? <ríe> Exacto. <ríe> All right, thank you. Next we'll go to Manuel Zepeda. Uh, thank you. Uh, gracias. Buenos días. Felicidades, Fernando. Y bueno, eh, cambiando un poquito 
en la dinámica, ¿cómo has sentido la, la pretemporada en este arranque allá en Peoria, dadas las condiciones en las que estamos todos viviendo? ¿no? Y tú sabes, los protocolos de sanidad y, y todo lo demás. ¿Cómo ves este arranque allá en Peoria? Algo un poquito diferente, tú sabes, con, con, con la cuestión del COVID, pero, ¿sabes? Definitivamente se extraña a los fanáticos. Yo siempre lo he dicho, yo soy una gran parte de esto, pero, ¿sabes? Al final del día seguimos enfocados. Yo pienso que cada, eh, cada jugador que está dentro de, del clubhouse sigue enfocado y todo el mundo estamos en la misma meta para ser un equipo ganador. Y, ¿sabes? Como te dije al principio, un poquito diferente, pero todo el mundo está enfocado en el trabajo. Las siguientes para AJ Preller. Eh, eh, AJ, cuando platicamos hace unos años, eh, tenías un proyecto y parece que se está haciendo realidad este proyecto de, de un equipo fuerte, competitivo y, y pensando futuro. Eh, ¿Estás en el tope como gerente general de tus padres o todavía esperamos algo más de ti? Y yo no sé qué él dice. <risa> <risa> si te quieres traducir para mí. <risa> Dime, like, dime en español, pero más despacio, dime eso. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo tú has ido construyendo este equipo y eh, como al final ya tú has subido y te has convertido uno de los general managers de, like, como más, más grandes que, que hay en el juego y que si esperamos más, like, like you add more to the team or like, like are, we gonna, are you going to set the like, oh, right. level? No, y... Y, no, y nosotros uh, gusta el equipo que tenemos ahora y you know, nunca, nunca decir que, que no, tú, no, tú no vas a buscar por otro talento, otra gente que puede ayudar al equipo, pero ahora estamos listos para, para practicar, estamos listos por la temporada y tenemos mucha confianza en los peloteros que están en el locker room ahora y, you know, y, y yo sé que el manager que Tingler y todo el grupo le gusta mucho el equipo que están allá tenemos mucha confianza y estamos listos para empezar la, la pretemporada y, y la temporada también gracias gracias <laughs> All right, we have time for one more in Spanish we'll go to Tony Alvarez thanks Craig uh, Fernando, felicidades eh, primero que nada preguntarte, mucho se ha hablado desde hace varios meses, no solamente en esta offseason frases como Fernando es la nueva cara del béisbol Fernando es la nueva cara del béisbol de grandes ligas ¿qué, qué sientes cuando escuchas eso y, y cómo mantener los pies en la tierra? porque mencionaba Jay Stingler hace unos días que tu combinación de emoción de estar jugando y bromeando y pasarla bien y de repente play ball y te enfocas todo eso te hacía un gran gran pelotero y comprometido ¿cómo, cómo mantenerte así? <risa> Es una, una responsabilidad muy grande, eh, ¿sabes? Dicho lo que, lo que, lo que mencionaste, una, es, conlleva una responsabilidad muy grande, pero si, pienso yo que con dedicación y, ¿sabes? Con enfoque, eh, con, con responsabilidad y, y tra seguir trayendo el mismo amor y la misma pasión por el juego, ¿sabes? Eh, todo eso se, se va a encargar solo y la gente lo va a ver y la gente va a empezar a hablar. Eh, pienso yo que... ¿Sabes? Es un dicho muy grande porque estamos representando el juego que uno ama, el juego que significa tanto para muchas personas. Y nada, lo, eh, el, el ejemplo de mí será que ¿sabes? ellos van a ver el, el mejor ejemplo. ¿sabes? Un, un, un hombre joven que sigue trabajando, que sigue luchando por su sueño con el mismo amor y con la misma pasión. Y yo pienso que al final del día todo eso se va a tomar cargo por sí solo. Gracias, Fernando. Y AJ, una rápida... Sobre el mismo tema, ¿qué, ¿qué tan fuerte liderazgo de Fernando, tan joven, te hizo tomar, junto con la oficina, la decisión de un contrato tan largo? Porque todos dicen, ¿no? Muy joven, pero con una capacidad de liderazgo importante, pensando también en 14 años mantenerlo. Ay... You know, yo sé que Fernando está joven, pero you know, él tiene, el número uno, él tiene mucho talento, pero más importante, y tú puedes ver, él está enfocado, qué él quiere hacer en, en la carrera, qué él quiere hacer por los próximos 14 años, y tenemos muchísima confianza y, en la persona. Eso es la, la cosa más importante, porque él, él tiene una familia que, que ayuda a él todo, todo el tiempo, y también él, es, él, él, él tiene más maduro, es, él, él, tiene, you know, él tiene mucho en la cabeza que, que van a ayudar a él en, la, en el próximo 14 años. Gracias, Felicidades. All right, unfortunately we have run out of time, but thank you very much, AJ.
And congratulations, Fernando. This uh, officially concludes our press conference. Have a great day, everyone.